I have said before and I'm going to say it again, magnetic force is very weird. But this time I'm going to explain to you exactly why it is weird and let's take an example. Here is a magnetic field. That magnetic field is uniform and it is everywhere and it's directed into the board, into the screen. And let's consider a positive charge that is moving towards the right as you can see over here. So here is the positive charge, let's move it a little bit towards the left. It's positive and it's moving towards the right. So we have already we have already seen that charges, moving charges in a magnetic field experience a force, and that force that they experience is given by the Lorentz. Since the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, the, the magnitude of that force is just QEB. We did that before, the same thing we're doing right now. And what's the direction of the force as seen by us? Well, <clears throat> The direction of the force is just going to be upwards okay so let's write that down over here the force will be upwards now here's something that you need to understand this calculation who is doing this calculation well we are doing that calculation so it's us all right so we are we are and we are the ones who are doing this calculation so I'm gonna call this as our reference frame that means this velocity is the velocity seen by us of this charged particle you may remember that velocity is frame dependent so if you change reference frames velocity is going to change all right and and by doing this calculation we know from our knowledge of the previous video that this charged particle is now going to move in some sort of a circular motion It's gonna go this way it's going to define and define an arc of a circle and I'm going to draw a reference line <clears throat> here is our reference line and what this reference line is I'm going to tell you what this is so what I want to do is I'm going to say look here is our here is our point over here uh, let's call this point as a and this, this is point B let's say that that charge right now at time t is equal to zero is at a then it's going to take some finite time for that charge to reach point B. And if we knew the distance between this reference line and this charge, we could calculate how much time it takes to go from A to B. So let's say we do that calculation and it turns out, let's say for example, it turns out that it takes about 0.5 seconds to reach B. Okay, to reach B then we know at 0.5 seconds it's going to be at that point B it's going to go and hit that reference line okay it's going to cross that reference line after 0.5 seconds okay so this is the analysis from our reference frame now the question is what if we considered someone else's reference frame someone else like this fellow over here okay so let's look at this guy Consider this dude over here, this guy over here. Look at what he's doing. Well, he's in a train or a bus or something that's moving towards the right with a velocity v, which is exactly the same as the velocity of the charged particle. My question is, if he were to do the same calculation on the charged particle, were to calculate what the force on the charged particle is and how much time it would take for that charge to move from A to B, what would be the answer from his perspective? Would he get 0.5 seconds itself or would he get a different answer? Well, let's find out. And before we do the calculation, I want you to try and calculate this. This is going to be a test of Newtonian mechanics and, and reference frames and stuff like that. <clears throat> okay, so if you have done the calculation, let's see what calculation turns out to be into the dude's reference frame. We are over here. Okay, let me write that. We are in dude's reference frame. So this guy is the dude, okay? Reference frame. Notice, according to his reference frame, he's going to say, well, he's at rest. Because everyone in their reference frame say they're at rest. You standing on the earth or sitting over there on the chair, you are saying you're at rest, correct? Even though you know perfectly well that sun is going around the, I mean, the earth is going around the sun. So every person, is uh, valid to say that every person can can say that he's at rest and that's valid now notice that if he considers himself to be at rest he will even see the charge to be at rest why well let's go back to your reference frame when we go back to your reference frame we understood that both of them are moving together with the same speed as seen by you therefore they'll both be moving together 
and hence from his point of view that charge is not going to move at all i think that makes a lot of sense right that charge is going to be at rest with respect to him okay fine that's that's normal relativity that's newtonian mechanics so what's the big deal the big deal is what happens if he calculates the lorentz force acting on that charged particle well let's see what happens well according to him that Lorentz force, well, he's going to use the same formula, of course, Q times V cross B. But guess what? According to him, that velocity is zero because that charged particle is not moving. And therefore, he's going to say, well, that Lorentz force is zero. You understand that? If the Lorentz force is zero, that charged particle will be at rest forever. Therefore, if you go and ask him, hey, dude, what do you think is going to happen to that charged particle? Do you think that's ever going to go and hit this reference line? He's going to say, nope. He's going to say that charged particle is never going to hit that reference line. Of course, he's going to see you going towards the left with the velocity v. That's just a detail. But what's important is he's never going to see you uh, if the charged particle hit the reference line. And that is really weird. Because from one point of view, so from your reference frame over here, the charged particle goes and hits the reference line. But from his reference frame, it doesn't. Who is right and who is wrong? Well, at first you might say, well, from each one's perspective, they're right. Well, that can't be true. Just imagine what if there was a bomb over here, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going a little bit of extreme case over here, but let's just imagine, imagine there was a bomb over here and imagine the trigger to that bomb was this charge going and hitting it. Well, according to us, that bomb is going to explode, but according to him, that bomb is not going to explode. But I'm pretty sure you all agree that both are not possible. How can bomb both explode and not explode at the same time? One of them has to happen. The explosion of the bomb is not relative. It's an absolute thing, an event. So you see one reference frame says an event happens and another reference frame is saying the event doesn't happen. How is that possible? That's why magnetic force is weird. You might say, well, okay, then the bomb really is going to explode. This fellow's calculation is wrong. And then this fellow would get offended. He says, why is he wrong? Well, you would say, because he's moving. He's not really at rest. But wait a second. There is no such thing as absolute rest and absolute motion. Everything is relative. And according to Newton, all inertial, inertial observers are valid to do physics. And Newtonian laws work for all inertial observers. And this guy is an inertial observer he's not accelerating and so the question now is what is the Lorentz force is it zero is it not zero you see the problem with this force the force is velocity dependent velocity is a relative term but a force is not supposed to be a relative term a force is supposed to be absolute quantity a force is supposed to be something that every inertial observer is supposed to is supposed to agree on because force gives acceleration and acceleration is supposed to be an absolute quantity and that's the problem with the Lorentz force so we have an apparent paradox over here so how do you solve that paradox you understand this is the problem with magnetic force magnetic force is weird we're gonna see the solution next time stay tuned